today is uh, 14 February, and in a rapidly globalizing world, I'm sure the popular significance of the day is not lost on you. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for coming here and sparing some of your precious hours with us today, although we may not be able to offer you the good romantic partner uh, you may be seeking. Um, the reason for our choice of 14 February is not because it's St. Valentine's Day, although love and romance uh, can make a good theme for today's gathering. Uh, we also don't certainly intend to distract you from your romantic dates, uh, which you may have, and we'll try to finish on time to give you enough time for that later. We were inspired to have our launch and get together today for a very local reason. If you switch on the Drup Zucker apps, you will discover that today is one of the most auspicious days in the whole calendar year of Bhutan. We are observing the Earth Peak Year, as you know, and today is Water Peak Day. And the elemental combination is of two Earths. And as complicated it may seem, according to our astrological calculations, the 10th day, Tsichu, which is actually tomorrow, has already begun this morning, if you follow the minute calculations. So we are already in the domain of the most auspicious day of Chotul Dawa, the most auspicious holy month of the year. So the convergence of the astral, planetary, and the zodiac positions make today a very good, powerful day to launch a good project. So on such an astrologically and spiritually special day, I, on behalf of the Lodin Foundation and the UN in Bhutan, would like to welcome um, Your Excellency, Minister of Health, Dr. Uh, Mo, and Your Excellency, Minister of Education, J.B. Rai, Your Excellency, Lempo Umpradhan, Dr. Lempo Doji Wangdu, and many other distinguished guests to the launch of the online portal of the Bhutan Dialogues. To both celebrate the achievements of Bhutan Dialogues in the past one and a half year, and also to reevaluate our purpose and achievements. Today, as we launch the online portal, we'll be opening up Bhutan Dialogues to an unlimited global audience. It's a big step for us. It's a step beyond the confines of the UN House in Bhutan to share our stories, conversations, and ideas with the rest of the world at the click of a mouse. And while we celebrate the success of Bhutan Dialogue so far and launch its online portal, we'd also like to <coughs> reprice our objectives and aims. It's time for us to reassess our aims, targets, and the needs in a rapidly changing world. It's time to reflect on our initial motives and aspirations. Why Bhutan Dialogues? Or are Bhutan Dialogues still necessary as we felt a year and a half ago? Are we carrying out the conversations effectively? When Jerry, Gerald Daly, of here in Bhutan, and I had initial meetings to visualize this forum of free, open, and civil conversations, we were fully conscious of the of where we as individuals, as a nation, as a global community stand in the process of development. We were, as we are today, fully aware of the need for deeper reflection on ourselves and our actions, for a thorough discussion of our development policies and practices, and for a constant evaluation of our outcomes and results. To put this in a local Bhutanese Buddhist framework, we were aware that we live in the epoch of degenerate times, when the five degenerate elements surge like rising tides. There is the degenerate time, to begin with. While our number of hours and days don't necessarily go down in quantity, our time with the multitude of distractions and occupations that we have today have our time has become much less useful and meaningful 
more wasteful and futile, shallow, and even hollow in cases of some people. Our hours and days and weeks flash by without much meaningful achievement. And such experience of time leads to an overall mode of living which is degenerate life. A hectic, stressful, distracted, and often empty, meaningless life. And such meaningless life then shapes our character and personality, identity and nature of being. We become degenerate sentient beings, sentient enigma, low in moral and spiritual qualities, poor in purpose and meaning, with shallow character and mode of existence. And in such a state, our thoughts and emotions, fears and expectations rage like the high waves of the sea. We live with the forces of wild, degenerate emotions. Nyomong be enigma, the fourth one. And our decisions are most based on our heart and the hot blood rather than reasoning and wisdom. These thoughts and emotions are mostly fed by the fifth and the final element of degeneration, the degenerate views, Tao Enigma. So those are the five degenerate elements. As the Buddha put it, we are caught in the thickets of our wrong views, prison of dogmatic beliefs, and shackles of our internal prejudices. The dogmatic attachment to and the espousal of these beliefs and views lead to the problems of discrimination, chauvinism, hatred, supremacy, and many other problems that we see rampant in this world. A degenerate view is a view which only sees one side of the story, has a partial view of reality, and is not open to alternative perspectives and outlooks, a view which is not willing to change and grow which defies progress and positive evolution. And with the digital revolution, which we have so excitedly embraced, we hope to achieve access to truth and freedom of expression <coughs> with the open tools of social media that we have. Sadly, this has also not come true, with distortions of facts, fake news, <coughs> of information and media, by political powerhouses and operate commercialization, we are only confronted with even greater challenge of scanning the enormous deluge of information, the challenge of doing a fair and honest analysis, and making the right and informed choices. So as a result, we see across the world waves of ill-informed and dangerous populism, protectionism, nationalism, and parochialism. We truly live, as the Buddha said, in the thicket of views and the wilderness of beliefs. We lack adequate dialogue, discussion and debates to burn the thickets and look beyond our known horizons. So the degenerate views, when coupled with the powerful technological and digital tools we have today, also cause far greater damage and destruction than they could have in the past. Thus, we feel that there is a greater need today, more than ever before, to share ideas, exchange perspectives, and discuss issues so that we refine our understanding of the world, ourselves, and of course, of human progress. So that we make informed decisions, have effective plans and policies, and also useful and sustainable results. Bhutan Dialogues was conceived and launched about a year and a half ago with these objectives the objectives of creating such a forum for civil conversations, for mindful listening, for right speech, in-depth discussions, and cordial debates. We believe in the Bhutanese adage, Parap chigi ripawa podiusungi jyutuka. The deliberation of three average brains is better than the idea of one best brain. We put into practice the priceless ancient advice of the Buddha that our ideas, words, actions, plans, policies and programs, like essaying gold by burning, cutting and polishing, must be thoroughly analyzed, critically studied and discussed. We try to practice the Buddhist path of realizing through our sustained efforts the Bodhisattva ideas of bringing benefit to both oneself and others, the global agenda of sustainable development, 
championed by the UN and the national goal of cross-national happiness. We, in particular, take inspiration from someone called Krista Tippett and her program On Being, a public radio show and podcast in the US, to conduct better conversations with humility, patience, and hospitality. And as she puts in, to ask enduring human questions, to carry out generous listening, powered by curiosity, to approach civility as an adventure, not as an exercise in niceness, and practice a patient view of time to seek gradual human transformation. So today, knowledge of the world is literally on our fingertips. We need not have any, make any efforts to give knowledge to people. What we need urgently is not a way to provide more knowledge and information, but a wisdom to analyze and understand knowledge, to sort and digest knowledge and information in a useful manner, to restrain from producing useless and harmful information. We need, in summary, what the Bhutanese masters called in the past, Sherapto Nambar Jimmy Sherap, the wisdom to discern things correctly. This, therefore, is the main objective, the spirit and the ethos of Bhutan Dialogues. Flying from Guwahati this morning over the Dagala Range, I could appreciate the breathtaking splendor and the extent of Tagala Mountain. And I could also remember and appreciate the old saying, Jok Logeshiru Dagale Putamash. A nomad could die from old age without fathoming the expanse of Dagala. Stuck in our own valleys and views, shut off from other perspectives and perceptions, we cannot appreciate the colossal and the complex counters of the Dagala that is humanity. We cannot appreciate the Dagala of the human mind and our efforts of development and human progress. So that's, it's very pertinent that we look at issues holistically from all angles and perspectives, particularly from the opposite side, as the Karmapalama once instructed. If one wants to see that mountain, see it from this mountain. This is a forum to which we bring people who have seen humanity's mountain from the other side, who have walked the dogs, who have left the mark. By bringing them, we hope to create, we have to share a vantage point to see our issues from different and contrasting perspectives. So by creating this space and inviting thought leaders and change makers, development experts, and people who hold insight into our pressing issues, who have endeavored to find solutions, who have made difference to shape their own worlds. And by sharing their stories, their ideas and habits, we hope to inspire and inform also the youth, the young people of Bhutan who constitute the major bulk of our population. We hope to stimulate in them curiosity and courage, equip them with new tips and techniques, and also expose to them to new role models and mentors. Thus, it is with these dual goals of refining our understanding of human development and progress, and inspiring and empowering the young people that we started Bhutan Dialogues, to one and a half year ago. We continue it today. And on this very auspicious moment, we launched the online portal. I wish to thank you for joining us in this venture and for your support to make Bhutan Dialogues a successful venture. Thank you very much.